Hello friends, I'm really excited to be sharing this new worship series with you beginning today. This is the season of creation. It is a, a celebration which is uh, ecumenical in nature. It began several years ago when the uh, world head of the Orthodox Church declared a day of prayer for creation on the 1st of September, and it goes through the 4th of October, which is the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi. It is uh, honored by the World Council of Churches, and I was privileged to be part of a United Methodist group with the uh, Creation Justice Movement, a worship working group that created these worship uh, materials. I'm pleased to share uh, the work of several wonderful colleagues and um, to reflect together on caring for our watershed and on the words of the prophet Ezekiel. Today we will also be celebrating communion here online, so I encourage you to get a piece of bread and some juice and be ready for that when that part of worship happens. Let us begin with a call to worship. I created uh, the videos for our call to worship and benedictions for this series uh, for use by other churches, and I'm delighted to be sharing them with you. We gather to worship, each stream feeding the growing chorus of creation. In our daily courses, we encounter obstacles, divisions, and diversions. All creation is singing the glory of God. God of the prophets and the people, we hear your voice calling to us through the ages as the sound of water reaches our ears through the forest. We long to be part of your time of peace and justice, part of the efforts to listen and preserve. We anticipate that hard choices are coming for us and for your people around the world, times when you present us with opportunities to provide sustainably for all rather than excessively for just a few. Strengthen us with your wisdom and courage. Help us turn toward you again and again, individually, as a community, and as a witness for what you make possible through the power of your way. Amen.
Ezekiel 18.27-32 And when the wicked turn from their wicked deeds and act justly and responsibly, they will preserve their lives. When they become alarmed and turn away from all their sins, they will surely live, they will not die. Yet the house of Israel says, My Lord's way does not measure up. Is it my ways that do not measure up? Isn't it your ways that do not measure up, house of Israel? Therefore, I will judge each of you according to your ways, house of Israel. This is what the Lord God says. Turn, turn away from all your sins. Do not let them be sinful obstacles for you. Abandon all of your repeated sins. Make yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why should you die, house of Israel? I most certainly do not want anyone to die. This is what the Lord God says. Change your ways and live. Thank you for coming along on our summer Selah. It's been a lovely time of getting to know one another better through the sharing of our personal stories and everyday experiences with beauty, pain, grief, disappointment, and limitations. Inviting God's grace into those vulnerabilities and building community through listening and conversation. And now, I encourage you to take a deep breath and strap yourself in, because we're going on a five-week romp through the words of the prophet Ezekiel, one of the more challenging books of the Hebrew Scriptures. I had a seminary professor who told me that Jewish scholars frown upon anyone younger than the age of 40 reading Ezekiel, because it requires a certain level of maturity to make sense of his bizarre visions and to put them into proper perspective. The irony of this comment was not lost on me because I was in my 20s at the time. Now, well past 40, I can understand the wisdom of that advice, though it may well be true for many of the prophetic writings of the Bible. It is neither easy to listen to a prophet nor to be one. In fact, many preachers find the roles of pastor and priest to conflict with the role of prophet, although all three roles are lifted up as integral to the faithful minister's job description. It's a sort of dance, maintaining a balance among these three hats. I pray that our years together have built up enough trust in our relationship bank account to allow me to lean into some uncomfortable territory with you for a few weeks, so we can mine some important insights out of this fascinating book. I found myself one day this week, awake in the wee hours of the morning, thinking about what I'm told is the best-known prayer in the United States. What prayer do you think that is? Some of you might think it's the Lord's Prayer. Or, God is great, God is good, and we give thanks for our food. Or, now I lay me down to sleep. But what I'm referring to is the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. That prayer is attributed to 20th century theologian Reinhold Niebuhr and has been particularly popular in the 12-step community starting back in the 1930s. It has worked its way deeply into American culture, and while it is a particularly helpful mantra for a person in recovery, I wonder if, Like the pastor-priest-prophet conundrum, there has come to be an overemphasis on the first petition of the prayer and a neglect of later parts. Accept the things I cannot change is a great balm in the face of past trauma and dysfunctional personal relationships. But in the face of a climate crisis, it may be that there are powerful business and government interests, or self-interests, hoping that we will put ourselves to sleep 
with accepting the status quo as a thing we cannot change, instead of taking on courage to come together to change the things that can and need to be changed, and abandoning questions of wisdom to those who are in charge, rather than wrangling with that hard work in our times of prayer, study, and reflection. The text from Ezekiel today, originally directed toward the people of Israel in the midst of their exile in the land of Babylon, declared that even in their deepest time of discouragement, dispiritedness, and difficulty, it was not too late to repent, to abandon the repeated ways that don't measure up, to make a new heart and a new spirit, It could not be easy to make this assessment, but it was a promise that resilience, a way leading to life instead of death, was possible with the help of God. And it still is. The focus of this year's season of creation is on watersheds. The image that our worship working group settled on for this week in keeping with the spirit of the Ezekiel text, is of a fork in a river, symbolic of making hard choices. On the Sacred Ground app, a number of the locations focus on the watersheds here in Sonoma County. Each week during this series, I want to show you a part of the Sacred Ground tour, especially for those of you who may not be able to visit these places or may not be able to access the app. If you don't have a smartphone, I want you to know that there is a version you can view in a web browser. Let's start with the Laguna de Santa Rosa, a portion of which is a county regional park accessible off Highway 12 near Sebastopol. On the Otocast app, there are photos, written information, and an audio narration. This is from the Info tab that I've written up. The Laguna de Santa Rosa is the receiving basin of a watershed where most of the county's population lives. As such, it is a landscape feature of critical importance to water quality and flood control in this region. It lies within the ancestral territory of the southern Pomo, Wapo, and Coast Miwok people who fished, hunted, and gathered food and basket weaving materials here for 10,000 years. The Laguna once covered wide expanses of oak woodlands, riparian forests, and seasonal lakes and supported herds of elk and antelope, mountain lions, and grizzly bears. The first Mexican land grant in the area was established in 1833, and in the 100 years that followed, settlers cleared the forests to make way for farming and ranching. Hunters brought in birds for the meat market in San Francisco, and portions of the Laguna were drained to make way for resorts. Where once the features of this landscape slowed the water, Now it rushes in a concentrated flow from the hills, creating a vast lake in the wintertime. The description goes on for a bit, then concludes, Take a faithful action. Remember that water flows from your roof, your yard, and your street downstream to places like this. Be conscious and careful about the building and landscaping products you use, how you maintain vehicles, and where you place your trash. Here's the audio narration for the Laguna, as it can be heard on the Sacred Ground app. It is recorded by my friend, Pastor Eunice Tovo, who serves both the Sebastopol and Forestville United Methodist Churches. Rich in bird life, The Laguna soaks up and holds water from the winter rains, protecting the surrounding land from excessive flooding. 
This is Sonoma County's largest freshwater wetland and the largest tributary to the Russian River. It is a unique ecosystem supporting a diversity of plant and animal life. Migratory birds stop here by the thousands and the area serves as a wildlife corridor and permanent home for countless other species, both common and endangered, from hummingbirds to bald eagles, bobcats to badgers, fish, amphibians, and insects. The Laguna filters out pollution from agricultural and urban runoff as well. Nature is doing a lot of work in this tranquil place. Consider this invitation. Just as this land soaks up water, take time to soak up this place with all your senses. Hone in on details, sounds, patterns, colors. If it feeds your mind, take note of the various species of life you encounter. But also be sure to feed your soul with wonder. Give thanks for all the life support that is happening here. Preserving what is left of the Laguna as a wildlife corridor and stopping point for migrating birds not only benefits the more than human life which depend upon this ecosystem, but it also keeps human beings safe from excessive flooding during the rainy season. Not only that, but spending time connecting with the natural world in places like the Laguna is healing to our bodies as well as our souls. However, our addiction to the use of fossil fuels and to a lifestyle of convenience has stressed our planet, including our watersheds, to the breaking point. So I return to the serenity prayer and ask, what is in our power to change? From what sources do we seek the wisdom to know what we can change and what we cannot? Are we willing to make the hard choices that lead to life, or will we continue on the easy path which leads to disaster? God speaks words of both hope and challenge through the prophet, saying, I most certainly don't want anyone to die. Change your ways and live. Creator God, stronghold of light and life, salvation God, with whom I say, should I be frightened of anything? Listen, evil is being done against the earth, the creatures, and the people. Evildoers encamp together, consuming and scattering, leaving only garbage. I, too, will be consumed. Sheltering God, Set me high in the rock among the cliffs. Raise me to your house with the hyrax and the bighorn sheep. Nestle me with the golden eagles and the rough-legged hawks. Shelter me in these troubling times. Hear my voice raised to you for my prayer and the prayers of my people. Creator God, set me high, and I will offer sacrifices with shouts of joy. Teach me your ways, and lead me on a good path, and I will delight in all the goodness you have made. I will not lose heart, but I will live by the river at the source, in the house of the Lord for all my days. Amen.
God is with us. God is with us. Lift up your hearts. Our hearts sing with all of creation. Let us give thanks to the source of all that is. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Out of topsy-turvy, you, O God, spoke the cosmos into being. Earth and sky reply. Water circulates between oceans, atmosphere, and land, becoming rain and snow streams and rivers, lakes and swamps and oceans, and returning to the heavens. Seeds become trees. Their fruit becomes seeds. Stars and planets and moons dance. Life rises and reaches for the heavens. You, Great Spirit, weave us into a fabric of water, wind, earth, and holy fire. And so, with all your creation and all the company of the heavens, we proclaim your name and join the unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Before time, through time, beyond time, you enflesh yourself as Christ, God with us. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb, baptized by John, and anointed by your Spirit. Jesus called disciples to share in the baptism of death and resurrection, and to make disciples of all nations. Jesus spoke of your hopes and desires for us and for our reconciliation in stories of mustard seeds, grain, vines, trees, and pastoral flocks. Jesus slept under stars and calmed stormy seas. Jesus gathered the little ones, for to such belong your dreamed-of realm. At table with beloved ones, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take this and eat. This is my body. Jesus likewise took a cup, gave thanks, and passed it to them, and they all drank from it. Jesus said to them, this is my blood, the blood of the covenant, which will be poured out on behalf of many. The truth is, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until the day I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. And so, in remembrance of these your humble and vulnerable acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Great Spirit, your work of stirring, strengthening, guiding, and comforting continues in sky and land and sea, in our lives and in our relationships in our hopes, and in our dreams. Draw us ever toward the garden that is the fruit of your love and compassion, a landscape of liberation and justice, watered by a mighty river flowing, watered by your grace. Pour out your Spirit on us gathered here, as upon all creation, and on these gifts of field and vine, Reconcile us with creation through this body and blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one with all creation. Now, as creatures seeking your grace, we pray in the manner that Jesus taught. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Each of us is called to play a part for good, no matter how small. May we outdo one another in zeal for our planet. Love all of creation with the love of siblings. <laughs> 